Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you will speak to us. Let us hear your voice. And by your Spirit, enlighten our hearts. Amen. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped the towel around his waist. After that he poured water into into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished, when he had finished, Washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He answered them, You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So far the reading out of the word. This passage we have just read is one of the precious portions in the Bible. Very blessed passage in God's word. Now, if we look at the world around us, they are obsessed with a certain kind of superficial love. Everywhere you see in the media, romantic movies, popular songs, cheap paperback books and novels, the entertainment of the day and everyday conversation is much about a certain type of love, but few people really understand what real love means. The world's version of love is to be self-focused. It's about me. It's about self-gratification. Because people are takers, not givers. But the love the Bible talks about is not a self-centered love, but it teaches us that the essence of love is self-sacrifice. And in this passage we have read, we read something about this love and Christ displaying this love, this humility, which we have seen right through His earthly ministry. Now this passage in John 13 speaks and is almost an introduction to a new section in John's Gospel. It's now getting closer to the cross and he is focusing more upon his disciples, the close inner group. In the introduction of the Gospel of John, we have seen that he informed his readers 
that there would be two reactions to Christ. Many of his people, mostly in Israel, would not accept him. He came to his own. Those who belonged to him, the nation of Israel, and his own did not receive him. In the first twelve chapters, John recorded the, cha- the, the, the tragic story of the rejection of the Messiah. We have seen it. But there were a few that accepted and received him as Savior. And at the end of chapter 12, we have seen last, the previous time when we studied in John, that Jesus went away and hid himself from those people. Those people who wanted to kill him, who rejected him. And now from chapter 13, he's spending more time with the closer inner circle. We read in verse 1. It was just before Passover. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. And having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. This feast of Passover, the annual Jewish feast, that commemorated God's salvation, His deliverance of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. And this was the last Passover Jesus had with His disciples. They were recalling the Lamb's blood on the doorposts. But now He was introducing a new covenant. The covenant of His blood, the blood of the Lamb, that would be poured out for many, for the forgiveness of their sins. And Jesus never wavered in His focus on His love for His own. This verse tells us, this love for His own is still the end. Not the arrival of death could separate him from those whom he loved, his disciples. But we also see, in that inner circle, he showed his love to his disciples, but we also see the rejection of that love. Verse 2, during the supper, the devil, having already put in the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, We've seen in verse 1 the, the wonderful light of Christ's love. But amidst that light we see the darkness of Judah's heart. Later on, shortly, he would wash in a humble way the feet of that disciple. That disciple that would do the greatest injury and insult to love. He washed his feet. A demonstration that Christ, in consistence with His command, showed love even to His enemies. But Judas, even receiving that love, was unmoved. Unmoved by it. The same love that draws, or draw the other disciples, turned Judas away. And so many today as well. Many people thinking about the cross. Many people hearing the gospel about the love of God for this world. But Christ gave His love even in this time that we think and moving towards Easter. Thinking about the death of Christ and His blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Many people hear that message but it hardens them. The same Son that hardens the clay, softens the butter. People react differently to hearing the word of God. And Judas, because of his greed, because of his ambition, he opened the door for the devil. 
and His influence. And you and I, we must always, always remember, if we allow sin, if we openly allow things that are wrong in our lives, we give a gap for the devil, and the Satan used that gap in Judah's life. He gave him the opening through his greed. And the devil took that gap until Judas was almost completely under control of the devil to betray the Son of God. And then we see Jesus performing the work of a slave from verse 3 to 11. The disciples walked in the dirty streets of Jerusalem and they were in this upper room their feet only protected by sandals, and it would naturally have been dirty. And since there was no servant to wash the feet, one of the twelve should have volunteered to wash their feet. But they were always arguing who was the greatest among them. So, no one of them volunteered to do that work. So instead of humbling themselves, they were always debating who was the greatest and the most important one amongst them. But we see finally in, in a wonderful display of humility that was almost a rebuke to the pride and the ambition of the disciples, Jesus took the basin. He took the towel. He poured water in the basin. He began to wash the disciples' feet. And it must have been an embarrassing silence in that room. Jesus acted as a slave. He knelt before each of his disciples to wash their dirty feet. It's not surprising that Simon Peter was never at a loss of words, was the first one to protest. He said, no, Lord, do you wash my feet? He washed my feet. It was unheard of that a superior one should wash the feet of an inferior person in that culture. So his outburst was almost a reflection of of his ignorance of why Jesus came into this world. And this verse tells us as well that only after the death of Christ, they really understood what he was doing. Only after his death, that's why Peter wrote later, you were not redeemed with perishable things of silver and gold from your futile way of life, but with the precious blood of Christ. He came for that purpose. So Peter says, Lord, never shall you wash my feet. In the Greek it's almost a double negative. No, Lord, you can do it for the other disciples, but not for me. Must have seemed praiseworthy, his act. But the Lord desires obedience above everything else. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 22 we read, And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings, as in sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. That is what the Lord asked of Peter. Not to speak, you know, people can speak wonderful religious words. The wonderful religious things can sound so modestly. But the Lord wanted obedience from him. And then the Lord answered him, Peter, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. And Jesus is telling Peter and the rest of the disciples this important message. If I do not wash you, if I do not cleanse you, you have no relationship with me. No relationship with me. We cannot wash ourselves. 
We are so full of sin. We have so chosen the wrong way. We so come short of the glory of God. We can never wash ourselves. We need Jesus to wash us. And he tells the disciples the spiritual message in this picture, in this washing of the feet is that if Jesus does not wash you from your sin, you have no part in him. If there is not a time in your life where you bow before God, knowing and acknowledging your sin, knowing that you have departed from His ways, repenting from the wrong in your life, coming to faith and bow before God to ask Him for forgiveness. If that hasn't happened in your life, yet you do not have any part of Christ. He must wash you from your sin. Without the washing of the blood of Christ, we cannot be saved. You need to come to Him and put your life and your feet in His hands. Acknowledge that you are unable to cleanse yourself. You cannot do it. You must put your feet in His hands and say, says, Lord, like the psalmist, search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my faults, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Many people do not experience any grace of cleansing from God and from Christ, because they are so full of pride. Lord, I don't need your washing. I don't need your blood. I don't need your forgiveness. I am good enough on my own. The message of the Bible is there is no cleansing without repentance. There is no cleansing without confessing your need for salvation. If we confess our sins, He is faithful to forgive us our sins. Jesus tells Peter, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. And Peter jumped to the opposite extreme. Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. He said, Lord, I want, I want it everything. I want it all over now. And Jesus answered, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet. The physical terms he's using are those who have already bathed do not need to take another bath every time their feet get dirty. You only need to wash your feet once in salvation. You need to be born again. You need to be made new by the salvation of Christ. And if you have received true salvation, it needs never to be repeated. It needs never to be repeated. There is a cleansing in Christ. There is redeeming power in the cross. And those who have received it, won't lose it. Hebrews 10 verse 14 tells us, For by a single offering He has perfected for all time those who are being sacrificed, sanctified. Once and for all, it was a single offering, it's a single cleansing from sin we receive from Christ. There is no need for Him to be offered all over again. He cannot be offered many times. He has been offered once and for all. The communion is only a remembrance of that fact. He said, if that has happened, He has been offered once and for all. There is no need for any other offering. There is no need for any other thing to add to the work of Christ. His life and his work and his sacrifice was complete. 
So if you have been bathed, all you need is to your feet to be washed daily. You are clean, he tells his disciples. Although he said, one of you are not clean, that is Judas. But the average disciples have received salvation from Jesus. And what they now needed was a daily washing. Because we are still sinners. We are still sinners. Daily we do something that is wrong. That's why a Christian needs to pray often. Lord, forgive me my trespass. Forgive me my sins. My feet needs daily to be washed. What is the acceptable response to Jesus? To the washing of the feet. It was not the act that was the important thing. Many people want to follow the ritual. It's not about the ritual of the washing of the feet. It is about the message. That's why Jesus said, do you understand what I have done? Do you know the importance, the main truth, what it is all about? Jesus wanted to teach his disciples the importance of humble, loving service. To do what he asked us to do. He said, no one no, no, no one, the learner, is not greater than the teacher. And this disciples is not greater than the master. If the Lord of glory was willing to humble himself and take up the role of the lowest slave, how could the disciples do any less? They, cannot, they must follow in the footsteps of Jesus. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? He's telling them here to follow his example. His example of humility. His example not of the outer ritual, but of the inner attitude to bow and serve other people. Jesus says, if you know these things, you are blessed. If you do them. That the biblical truth flows out of obedience. Blessing comes when I obey. When I follow in the footsteps of Christ. In 1 John 2 verse 6 we read. The one who says he abides in Christ. Ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. But Jesus is telling them, if you have been truly saved, and you've been washed, and you've received redemption and salvation through the blood that cleanses from sin, that you will follow Jesus. You will be where He is. You will do like He does. You will be in His footsteps. You will imitate Him because of love. Because you have been born again. And you will follow the example of the love in humility. And in doing, he says, you will be blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your example. We thank you for your blood. That you, once and for all, made a sacrifice for sins. That your work was complete. That we can add nothing to it. No ritual can add anything to that. No religion can add anything. But Lord, help us to know that if you haven't cleansed us, we have no part in you. We know there are so many people today Busy with religious activities. But have never been cleansed by the blood of Christ. Have never bowed before a holy God in confessing their weaknesses and their sins. Who have never seen your glory. 
who have never acknowledged and saw the, the dirtiness of their own feet. Looking at the feet of other people. Think they are need cleansing and not themselves. Lord, help us that we might really know what it is to have a bath. The bath of the new birth. The cleansing of the blood of Christ. And lead us in the way of sanctification by daily following in the footsteps of Christ. We ask it in your name. Amen.